What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for my haul for the month of June of 2022. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we have my monthly haul. This is for June of 2022. Been doing this for quite a number of years. As a matter of fact, my graphic novel hauls are what brought a lot of people to the channel. Uh, so yeah, nonstop, even through the pandemic, I was getting books and I got books sent to me. Uh, but yes, we have a lot of trade paperbacks here, some hardcovers, some exclusive Kickstarter stuff, and I'll be talking about where you can get those too. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Some of these you've seen videos on, and I can always leave the link above for you to click on in case you miss a specific video. But before I get started, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. Seriously, all that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. Now let's get started. First order of business is Empowered. I got a set of volumes 1, 2, and 3. These are the hardcover editions that were published by Dark Horse. I love these spines. Uh, a series by Adam Warren. Um, that I think it started off as like sketches at conventions and then he decided to actually tell a story about this character. So this right here is Alyssa, Alyssa Megan Powers, so EMP. And she happens to be a superhero in this world where superheroes exist. Uh, actually, she has a degree in, what was it called, like the metahuman... Um, she has a degree in like metahuman studies. So in this particular world, superheroes exist and her power was triggered at a young age. So she doesn't, uh, how, do, how do I put this? Um, I haven't read this in a while and I'm so glad I picked these up um, because I think some of these are now out of print. I think the soft cover editions are still available. But what I was going to say is that she like has issues with her body, like the way that she looks, especially when she's wearing this super suit outfit that kind of amplifies her powers. So a lot of it has to do with that. So if you're asking, well, why the hell she keep wearing it? It's because her suit gives her also super strength. And like I said, amplifies a lot of her own powers here. Let's look at volume two to kind of see the artwork. And I've talked about Adam Warren on my channel before. He was one of the earliest pioneers for manga in America. Like, before manga made it huge. I know, there was a time before there was manga where you see all these videos of like, Manga's outselling comic books, Western comics. Anyway, before all of that, there was a time when manga was very vague. Then we called it manga, not manga. Because we didn't really know the pronunciation of the word. Because nobody really bothered to tell us how to properly pronounce it. Uh, we call, I mean, a lot of it's just called the Japanese comics. Um, and they were very rare. So Adam Warren, I remember being one of the creators here in America that started publishing his own books. And then he started publishing his own um, bubblegum crisis type of story. So it was like Adam Warren's bubblegum crisis. So it was set in the world of Pris and the Replicants. And all those characters from Bubblegum Crisis, but it was done here in America. And I thought that was so cool that how did this guy get the rights to this and i those i think unfortunately those are out of print the bubblegum crisis books that he put out uh, i know there were trade paperbacks available that you can still get but this is what his art style looks like you know it's very very manga influenced very anime influence or what we called back then japanimation uh, but there are three volumes of this i don't know if there's a fourth volume because i never got past uh the second trade of this particular series but this is in power they are a little bit smaller uh bigger than your tonka bond but definitely smaller than the size of your trade paperback so here is a marvel trade for comparison it's a little bit taller than empowered but these are in black and white and hardcover now you may have seen my overview of the question omnibus it is up on the channel one of my favorite Stories to have been collected in Omnibus Edition is finally here, and it dropped in the month of July. And I went over it pretty thoroughly on a video, so if you want to check that out, I'll leave the link above. But that is the Question Omnibus Volume 1. Now, one of my viewers, Joel, sent me this copy of Convergence. I can't believe I never got this. I thought at one time maybe they were going to do a big Omnibus of Convergence, the main story, and all the miniseries. But DC never got around to it. 
Now, this is a standard size hardcover, meaning that the artwork is no bigger than what you're going to find in the trade paperback. I don't think, and I'm almost, I think I'm 99% right, I don't think they ever did an oversized hardcover collection of this or any of the miniseries. Uh, the only time you're ever going to see oversized artwork with convergence stories and it is when they are in some kind of omnibus collections featuring those characters uh, but this was a story during the 52 or i'm sorry the new 52 era and this collects issues zero through eight of convergence so written by jeff king and dan jurgens i think uh, scott lobdell did some of this carlo pagulayan uh, who did artwork for the hulk does some of the artwork in here and you're going to find some andy kubert artwork in here as well but it was a big event during the 52, and like I said, it surprises me that they never really properly collected it. But this is the Convergence hardcover. It does have a dust jacket. And this is from my buddy New Spooey Channel. This is the wedding album of Jean Grey and Scott Summers. And it's been collected in the Wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix. It wasn't an omnibus, but come on, let's face it, it was an omnibus. This is a diploma from the Xavier Institute for Higher Learning. I just need to write my name there. But this is the way that it originally came out in this magazine-style format. And you have Ian Churchill supplying the artwork in here for the main story. And then, of course, you have different pinup artists that do the artwork later on. Like back here. I believe that's Ken Lashley doing some of this artwork back here. And you have just different artists and their take on the wedding reception and things like that. This was a lot of fun. But like I said, this has been collected in the um, Cyclops Wedding of Cyclops and Phoenix oversized hardcover. But this was a trip down memory lane. I remember having a hard time finding this particular uh, book because it wasn't part of my monthly subscription box that I had at my comic book store because it came out in magazine format. Now we're getting to the Kyle pile. So... Man, my buddy Kyle sent me some amazing Kickstarter books that I'll be talking about here in a little bit. Uh, but he also sent me these out of print, Star Wars Knight Errant. And these are the stories of the young Kara Holt. And these have not been collected in Marvel Epic Collections yet. They haven't been collected in an omnibus format. But this series gets some big praises. Uh... I, I, I haven't gotten around to reading it. I just got it in a couple of weeks ago when he sent it. But let's go back to Volume 1 since I haven't read it. I don't want to spoil this. But this is written by John Jackson Miller. And it is drawn by Federico Daloquio and Ivan Rodriguez. And I really enjoyed John Jackson Miller's work uh, from the stuff that I've read from... Uh, just pretty much the legacy stuff, which is what Marvel or the Disney era refers to when talking about the Dark Horse era. But this stuff right here, I haven't gotten around to reading it uh, because, like I said, I don't think it's been printed. I kind of lost track of the uh, Star Wars Epic Collections a few years back when I decided to just sell the stuff and then get them in omnibus format. And now Marvel has been releasing these books in omnibus format and doing such a better job at that that I'm kind of glad they decided to go that route. Uh, but this is volumes one, two, and three of that. And we also got DC Top Cow crossovers. Oh my gosh. Hell yes. Who is the artist? It looks like Joe Benitez on artwork there. Yep, yeah, it is Benitez. Uh, but this is the Top Cow stuff. So the Mark Silvestri stuff that he did. Like Darkness and Witchblade and of course Cyber Force. And the crossovers with the DC characters. And you know, you have a lot of the Top Cow artists that get to draw this. I believe this is David Finch right here. So long before he did the Dark Knight ongoing series. And this is the Justice League Cyber Force. Or no, Justice League uh, Witchblade. This is the Superman Darkness. This is uh, Tyler Kirkham. Who has a very similar style to Mark Silvestri. And then we do have the Justice League Cyber Force back here. And... I want to say that this is drawn by... Yeah, this is uh, early Doug Mankey stuff. So long before he was doing Green Lantern or Justice League, he did this particular crossover. None of this has been collected anywhere else in the DC trades. Uh, so, man, this is such a rare gem to have. Because I'm a huge fan of art, despite of what I think about some of the stories. 
uh, the artist would also carry some. I mean, it is a visual novelization, right? So we're talking about graphic novels. So, of course, for me, the artwork goes a long way sometimes. And sometimes, of course, the writing, you know, is what carries the art. But this is a uh, trade paperback. It's only available in trade. Now, as part of the giveaway, he also sent me the Dark Arc. This is the Arc 1. Now, this is being collected in a all-in-one book. Uh, I don't know why Aftershock decided to collect them in two different books at first. Like, you had this oversized hardcover, and then you had the collection of Colin Bunn. So, not sure why they decided to go that route with this, but... Uh, now there's an all-in-one. So it's about, of course, uh, the other arc that's not Noah's. is where all the evil animals went. And it's a great story with a great kind of like a mystery whodunit. Uh, but yeah, he decided to send this my way for a giveaway. This is Witch Creek Road, the yearbook edition. This is a web-based series in its dark and mature content. So... The book has been collected and self-published by the author. Uh, and it's just the complete story all in one hardcover. The way that he wanted it without any publisher interfering. So it is self-published. And you can purchase this from witchcreekroad.com. It's not available in stores or any online retailer if you're liking the artwork here. So it's just a tale of survival horror. Uh, so there's also Death and Revenge. And of course, Witch Creek Road. So it is an ongoing as a webtoons. Man, it's pretty graphic. That's awesome. Uh, what was I saying? It is an ongoing webtoon series. So there might be another hardcover plan. But this is all kind of like the first season, if you will. And one thing I didn't note was you have an introduction here. But I love the way that they have the writer, the artist, and the colorist. Uh, as part as like the faculty yearbook because it is the yearbook edition so it does come with a dust jacket it is a standard size hardcover and underneath the dust jacket looks like your high school yearbook the dust jacket is printed in this really thick like glossy finished paper i mean it is a thick uh finish to it and the paper quality in here is thick and glossy but uh yeah, the only way to get it is to go to witchcreekroad.com. From Titan Comics and part of their Statics Press, I picked up Azimut, The Adventures of Lost Time. And I love these European books. Oh, and this one looked gorgeous. I saw the internal artwork and I was like, yep, oh, yep, got to get it. And holy crap, has Titan Comics Static Press line just grown my goodness, there's Snowpiercer in here, but there's just so many books. But just fall in love with the artwork. I haven't read this, by the way. I've only just seen some of the pictures from, um, I think it was a previous book on Diamond's website, uh, where they, wherever they let you click on it and look at the internal artwork, that's what I looked at. And I was like, yep, I'm getting that. It looks way too gorgeous. It kind of reminds me, making sure we're okay there. Yeah, almost no nip slip. We're good. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like Mobius uh, mixed with like a cartoony style. And I'm mainly probably basing that on the colors. My goodness, this is gorgeous. Is she okay? Yeah. Sometimes I got to be careful with the Titan books whenever they're mature content, making sure I'm flipping through the right pages. Otherwise, I find myself editing the crap out of a video. Okay, so all the way in the back are the cover gallery and the art is done by jean baptiste andre and i want to make sure i'm pronouncing it right the writer is wilfred lupano and the translation mark bourbon crook that one i can do bourbon state of kentucky this is a hardcover and no dust jacket on it but they put some beautiful books out there if you ever want to expand your mind i think i'm going to do a titan spotlight just on titan books it's funny because I just got empowered and Kyle sent me Gold Digger. This is a book that also brings back memories. I remember Antarctic Press was one of those companies that they were putting out manga-looking books that weren't really manga. They didn't pay for the licenses for books, so they had like their own creators here in the West create manga-like stories. And Gold Digger was one of them. So this is all done by Fred Perry. This is the whole series, and then plus for the first time, the black and white comic strip in color so this is 
like one of the most longest running and self-contained U.S. comics ever written and drawn by the same creator. So Fred Perry doing all of this. Uh, you have the character of Gina Digger. And she's kind of like your Indiana Jones with a hint of, of course, the anime and manga influence of the day. So it is just a funny and silly adventure comic. That's all it is. This is I remember when these were coming out in the changes. The changes in colors when we were going into the mid-90s with that computer-generated colors, if you will. And this, I think this is one that is currently out of print. The only places you can get them are like third-party markets, like used sellers on eBay. It is only in soft cover, but it's one of these soft covers that has like, you know, it's harder than most of the soft covers that you get. Here's the cover gallery all the way in the back. My brother was a bigger fan of Gold Digger than I was, but kind of when he took a break from comics, I picked them up from him. Yeah, this brings back a lot of memories. This is a really thick book. So this is published by Antarctic Press, and like I said, currently out of print. Uh, but if you look in the third-party market, you may be able to find it. Oh, yeah, 100 Bullet. Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Rizzo. Man, I got lucky by going to that page because this book is pretty graphic. I did a complete overview of this if you want to check it out. Um, and, you know, what's missing from it. But hopefully they'll do some kind of Brother Lono oversized hardcover to put a book into this particular title. This is so purely coincidental. Melanie and I were able to attend a couple of panels in uh, Heroes Con. And one of the panels we went to were just a bunch of podcasters that got together. They were really sweet people. And one of them has uh, just a Trekker. It's a husband and wife team that just have a Trekker uh, podcast. And it's all by Ron Randall. And I felt like such a jerk because I had never read Trekker. I've seen the pictures and they were wearing Trekker shirts. And I've always been intrigued by it. And in pure coincidence, Kyle sent me this book. Like, I think the week we got back from Heroes Con. This is a beautiful hardcover. It does have a ribbon. And it is The Complete Journey Volume 1. Let me get the ribbon. There's the ribbon. It's not... It's almost like a bronze color. It's probably brown. It's the way it's going to show on screen. But this is what the artwork by Ron Randall looks like. And it's 520 pages. This was originally published by Dark Horse Comics. There were trade paperbacks that Dark Horse put out. But those are long out of print. And... This edition has been recollected into this oversized hardcover, and it is freaking beautiful. Oh, so a lot of the pages are in color for the first time. I was doing a little research in, on this because I had never read a single issue of this book. There is a volume two that's in the works right now. And right now, the only place to get it is through Indiegogo. So if you just look up Ron Randall Trekker, you can purchase it from there and they'll ship it all over the world. And... All it is is about Trekker. All I know about her is that she is a bounty... Oh my goodness. A bounty hunter. And Ron Randall's artwork is just gorgeous. And this is the picture that they were wearing on their t-shirts. And I'm like, I remember that. I've never read it. So when we went to this uh, podcast panel that they had, this couple were... They were talking about how they became friends with Ron Randall because of their podcast. And I was like, that's so cool. And they also became friends with Mike Grell. And I feel like a jerk now because I cannot remember the name of the podcast because I don't really podcast. That's more of the Astonishing Melanie's thing, which is why we ended up in the panel. Let me see if there's anything extra in the back. Holy crap, there's a lot of extras. There's a whole sketchbook back here. And if you're wondering about the dimensions of this one, this is bigger than, I want to say, the God Hates Astronauts. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than God Hates Astronauts. Just like, not sure if you can tell from that angle. We'll look at that in a little bit. So, so it feels like it's a deluxe oversized hardcover. This is a trade paperback again, comparing it to the size of this. It is a little bit taller. So I guess compared to the size of an Omnibus Edition, it's almost the same size as an Omnibus Edition. Whenever these books are being self-published, size kind of becomes an issue because you have to have the dimensions right. But yeah, it looks like it's about the size of an omnibus. Just falls a little bit shorter than one. Man, this is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. You have original pages back here. So yeah, if you're a fan of Trekker and you've read this, let me know in the comments down below what I'm in for. All I know about her 
is that she's a badass bounty hunter. And I swear that's it. There is a bio from about Ron Randall and thank yous. Uh, the art is on board. There is no dust jacket or anything. So let's talk about this because I did uh, bring this up. Uh, Kyle saw my haul and he was like, you didn't get the hardcover of God Hates Astronauts? And I was like, I didn't know there was one. So apparently this went through Ryan Brown's Kickstarter. It was the only way to get this. Uh, but this is the exact same content as the Omnibus softcover edition that was published through Image Comics. And this here doesn't say Image Comics. It's just brown, down question mark down here, uh, the back of the book. And you can... Even though the Kickstarter was funded, I believe if you message him, you, he still has some copies left. And <laughs> that's a take on Youngblood. Awesome. I never got around to reading it. I got it in my haul. Let me make sure. Yeah, everything's cool. Uh, I got it in my haul about two months ago. Uh, and it's in my stack of books to read. But now that's going to be... This is like a 3D issue. But now that's going to be replaced by this hardcover comic. I know a lot of you... Uh, have told me that you've gone on and read it and how much you ended up enjoying it. I'm just looking at the cover art back here. Uh, but this is the hardcover edition. It's really interesting the route that not just creators are going, but also publishers like Boom and uh, Dynamite. Like I noticed that they're doing a lot of that. Like, of course, recently Dynamite with the boys' um, omnibus hardcovers. But boom, they did it with Power Rangers of doing it with Irredeemable. And I know the Power Rangers thing really pissed people off because at first they mentioned it, it was only going to be exclusive through Kickstarter. And then places like Cheap Graphic Novels or Walt's Comic Shop, Dime Breed Collectors, they can order the exact same set that people paid an arm and a leg for. So it really pissed people off. Now, I don't know the final product if it's going to look different, right? The covers could be different. But I do find it interesting that creators and publishers are now going that crowdfunding route uh, and people have asked me why doesn't marvel do that with reprints why doesn't dc do that i think it's a lot different whenever you have the book market in mind you have to also make the book market happy uh, then you're looking at print on demand and i don't think that's a route that they want to go but independent publishers and independent creators can definitely do that with their own creator owned stuff oh bookmark didn't even notice. Hell yes. It's ridiculous how happy those things make me. Uh, there's also this print in here. Let me see. There's a piece of tape. I didn't look at it. Yeah, and so many of you, when I had the haul, asked me if I was getting the hardcover. And, well, here we go. Make sure I can put it back in. Looks like it's something else in here. Like a little mini poster that looks like a sticker. That looks like a postcard. Has anybody ever used those? Yeah, and these are like mini posters. But they're, it's interesting because they're printed on this non-glossy paper, which is not the way that I'm used to posters looking like. I'm used to them having a glossy finish to it. Uh, but yes, this is a book I cannot wait to dive into. Now, I did do a video on Catwoman of East End, another one of my most wanted omnis. Ed Brubaker, Darwin Cook, Paul Galachi, just... Finally able to have this in omnibus format. I hope they continue it. I hope they see the sales of this. And while Will Pfeiffer's run isn't, of course, as epic as this, I think it, you know, it, it's really underrated. There are a lot of things that happen in that particular run that I think are important in the life of Selena Kyle. And then what happens to Holly, of course, one year later after Infinite Crisis. So I hope they keep continuing this line and, you know, call it the Will Pfeiffer years or something. Oh, yeah, dude, this was one of my favorite reads this year. Whenever I did an overview of this, I was really careful talking about it. I didn't want to spoil uh, in case who the last Ronin was. Um, thinking from time to time, sometimes I want to do reviews on this vid on, on this channel. Uh, on this video. I mean, Uncanny Omar Talk Pretty One Day. On this channel, uh, to go more in depth with these stories that I like reading. And I want to talk to somebody about... That's why Melanie started the book club on our Patreon to kind of have a deeper discussion uh, with all, you know, the people on the Patreon tier. But yeah, I think from time to time I want to do that just to see comments of what people thought about this and then, you know, actually put a spoiler banner on there. Uh, but this is the last run and I did do an overview of this. Discordia, Volume 1. This is the Slipcase Edition. Man, Kyle 
just i have no idea where he got this uh this is the slipcase edition all the way from barbados it has two books in here uh, i guess it has volume but i'm sorry book one and book two feels like falling and i guess feels like falling too um here let's look at some of this artwork make sure i haven't uh, opened this up i was waiting to do this video so they are hard covers that come signed, and these are available through voidkingpublishing.com. It's not available anywhere else. I'll put links in the description of the video. Um, and it's not available anywhere else, but these are shipped internationally from Barbados all the way to the U.S. If you're interested and you live here. If you live in Barbados, hey, more power to you. Uh, but yes, this is a... It looks like it's a self-published book. Definitely, there are some adult themes in here, not just language, but also the visuals. So all of this is written and drawn by Ravines, who you see on the title here. Let's look at... Um, actually, let's see if there's anything extra in the back. Okay, in the back, there are some not safe for work covers or pinups. Let me make sure these are okay. Uh, but yes, what I was going to say is all of this takes place in the world of Discordia. Let's look at volume two. Created by Ravines. Looks like an Alice in Wonderland type of world, but it has a lot of adult themes. And yeah, you're going through this journey with this character named Jackal Black. So, man, this artwork just looks... I know it may look cartoony to a lot of people, but I dig it. I love it. And the character designs are just crazy. Kind of reminds me of something I would see on... Oh, that's awesome. What the hell was I saying? Like something late at night on Cartoon Network. Panel layouts are nice. This is not, and this is all in English, by the way. Um, otherwise, yeah, why would I be talking about getting a book from Barbados? But that is very cool. Just art on board, front and back, book one and two. There is a crowdfunding right now for a volume two of the slipcase. So I guess the story continues. I like the design to the slipcase. The art goes all the way around and you have this cordia feels like falling up here at the top and then the stars down there cat man i am so glad so kyle sent me this slipcase too and that is i love the color of this it just really stands out this is an art book from uh hishum hapchi and it's a concept artwork. He's also a comic book artist. He was born and raised in Morocco. Man, Kyle did all this research for me before he sent this my way. So, okay, here we go. It just tells you right here. Raised in Morocco. He lives in the Bay Area of California. Uh, this is the first time I've opened this up. It is currently available through a closed Kickstarter. But he may have some copies uh, available through his Kickstarter. And... Actually, cheap graphic novels may still be able to get it through you because uh, sometime next year, not, not in 2022, but in 2023, uh, they are going to go exclusively with like Diamond. So they might be able to get it for you, either Walt's Comic Shop or Cheap Graphic Novels. And holy crap, this art is awesome. The, he knows how much I love art books. Damn, this is cool. So apparently he's also drawn for uh, League of Legends, Borderland 3s. He's done some Spawn com um, comics. I'm going to skip some. Just making sure it's all safe for work. Actually, it looks like it is. And he is the principal concept artist for Riot Games. That is awesome. Oh, I was going to say I have Overwatch vibes when looking at this. And that's exactly some of the stuff that he's worked on. Ah, this is really cool. It's printed on this thick matte paper. I love that we have pencils and inks. We have rough sketches and we have finished pieces. Damn, this is gorgeous. It's one of those things I go heavy on sometimes when I'm uh, shopping. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that art book. And then I get recommendations or sometimes I go for out-of-print art books. I'm like, oh, like right now there was a, what was it, the Capcom and Tasuka art book. I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. But big fan of art books. And this looks absolutely stunning. Let me look and see what else. Yeah, I was going to say if there's finished pieces. Very freak, oh, very, very freaking cool. Love his style. Uh, but this does come in a slipcase, and it is just called Cat. K-H-A-T. 
Last but certainly not least, I think everybody and their mother already has this one. It's been out since February. It's been out for months. I don't know what happened. Uh, I forgot about it. So what happens when you have a show and you're talking about other books and you're reading books every day and you're making videos every day? You forget about some of the crap that you were supposed to order, but here we have the World of Black Hammer Collecting 2 series. Colonel Weird, Cosmogog, and Barbalian. Red Planet, written by Jeff Lemire, Tyler Crook, hell yes, and Red Planet is done by Tate Bromball. It's a story by Jeff Lemire and Tate Bromball. The artwork is Gabriel Hernandez Walta. Oh, dude. Okay, so I've read this one here in trade paperback format. So before they were doing these World of Black Hammer Deluxe Editions, and I have not forgotten, somebody asked me to do a reading order. I'm just waiting for them to announce the next Deluxe Edition to, to see exactly where it all fits in. But what I was saying is before they were doing these Deluxe Editions, Tyler Crook's artwork is just beautiful, though. Uh, they were releasing them in trade paperback format. And better not spoil that one. And that was the way that you could get it. Uh, in trade paperback format, and then we found out that Black Hammer was being released in these library editions. And then, holy crap, they announced the world of Black Hammer, because of course that's what you do uh, when you're working in a Jeff Lemire world-building type of story. But I haven't read this one back here. Uh, this is the one by Walter, I think. Yeah, these books are absolutely gorgeous. They are huge, oversized, like, bigger than, you know, these is your deluxe edition here from idw and you can see how much bigger it is up there and there we go here's a better angle to see how much taller it is than your omnis and your deluxe editions from marvel and dc uh better not flip too much through this one this is the one that i read and it's all about colonel weir just traveling through space and time oh he knows how to pull at your heartstrings too lemire does let's look in the back here so we have some sketchbooks. Let me make sure there's no spoilers. These are all characters that appeared in the world, or I'm sorry, of course, in the world of Black Hammer, in the actual Black Hammer comic, and he just wanted to expand on these characters because he had other ideas. Now, there is a new Black Hammer comic. It's coming out in trade paperbacks only, and I'm sure that will be collected in another deluxe edition sometime. Or some pinup stuff, and then, of course, an afterward. These books all have a dust jacket because some library editions don't. But this is the World of Black Hammer, Volume 3. And that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsors. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. If you live in Europe and are interested in pre-ordering or purchasing Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC big books within the EU, Flat shipping of 990 euro for EU countries, extremely careful and sturdy packaging, emails are answered within 24 hours, and they have a superb selection of new releases and out-of-print books on their website. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. And for a limited time, you can use the code near mint condition all one word at the checkout for free shipping to all EU countries with your first order. Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and Premium Collected Editions in Europe. And that was my haul for the month of July of 2022. Let me know in the comments down below what you picked up, what some of your favorite books that you picked up in July were, whether they were Wells or whether they're just brand new books that have been coming out. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. And again, thank you. Big thank you to my buddy Kyle. And everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.